Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is still 4F Beauty. And if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. Panic not, glorious Technicolor is on the way. However, you will have seen uh, from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of it, the description, that this is episode 50. We've reached the half century in my pick series. I, I wasn't even sure we were going to get to double figures, let alone get to half a century. I mean, good grief, that's, that's just astounding. And I'm super delighted that the wonderful Anne is the lady who is sharing the half a century episode with me. So, if you want to find out exactly what the picture is that is inspiring our looks today, which palette or palettes I'm using and what this looks like in Glorious Technicolor and then my friends as always you have the best seat in the house it is officially that time you know what's coming grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up Get comfy, because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Lighting is so weird today, I keep waiting for it to brighten up and it hasn't. It's been absolutely chucking it down since about half past four this morning. So, once again I am relying on my poor little LED strip light behind the camera to uh, illuminate the situation. Um, unfortunately this is what happens in the UK. We, we have British weather. Right, you will have seen from the intro this is a pick photo inspiration challenge collab today and the photo that we've chosen it was actually it's actually a screenshot that I've taken from a video that Anne sent to me going, look how pretty this is. Now, people know I am not a fan of moths. I'm terrified of them. I have an absolute phobia of them. I did have a phobia of butterflies as well. I'm getting past that. Moths are still, mm, no. However, this one, although it looks like a moth, it's not. It's actually um, a type of praying mantis and it's called a flower mantis. Um, and it's, it's got camouflage to blend in with floral settings, hence its colours. Um, they nicknamed the... Uh, <laughs> I nicknamed the mantis Miss Frilly Pants. Don't. Just don't. Um, and they found her in a lavender bush. So um, you can see from the colour of Miss Frilly Pants there, she is perfectly blending in with the greens and with the lavender. So. No, you can't get this one anymore, but it gives me the perfect excuse to rack out my favourite Blush Tribe palette because, oh look, greens and purples and a black. <laughs> These are the colours in that picture. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Ha -ha! Uh, this does still remain a teaching channel, so I will still be 
zoomed in tight just to my eyes I will still be going at a speed that beginners can keep up with partly due to my chronic pain um, and I will also be talking you through each step as I always do now one of the issues shall we call it of being so zoomed in that it's just my eyes on screen although it means you can absolutely see what's going on even if you're watching me on a phone screen and your eyesight's not what it used to be when I'm looking down to clean the brush, change the brush, add more pigment you get a lovely shot of my little widow's peak hairline just here you're welcome um, but as I said it's a small price to pay for being able to see what's actually going on a last little bit of chuntering before we get on to putting colours on my face a lot of people with deep set eyes are told or mistakenly believe they have hooded lids so I'm going to insert a clip in just a second or two which will talk you through how to work out which eye shape you have and it will be zoomed right in tight to just my eyes so it's really easy to see what I'm talking about uh, and I'll also talk you through how best to apply makeup for your eye shape whether it's deep set like mine or whether it's hooded once that's done I will be back with my elf blending brush and my blush tri palette so I'll see you at the other end this little clip now um, my eyes have this primer on it this is the Crime Pebble primer in blank page cotton I do have a discount code for this it is not affiliated I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them the reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment white is the lightest the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get I get transference of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye 
you can see I've got as much, if not more lid, that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I am starting with this fluffy eye blender brush from e.l.f. It's not actually an oval, it's actually a round blender brush, but it got a bit of squashed when it was in the post. And it's still finding its true shape, bless it. <clears throat> right. Um, I think what I'm going to do is concentrate on blending greens on the top half and then putting the lavender shades on my actual mobile lid. So I'm going to start off with... I think Mahia. <clears throat> Obviously, <clears throat> if you've got this palette, you can follow on. Uh, if you haven't got this palette, then just pick a palette that's got similar colours. Right, always hold the brush at the very end, so you put as little pressure on your lid as possible. If the handle is long enough, you can brace it against your palm to stabilise the other end a bit. And we're going to be doing the Viennese Waltz of blending, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back out again. And the reason we do this, the reason I do this, I'm 46, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyelids moves. <coughs> Sorry, I appear to have brought a frog with me in my throat today. Um, but I know slim teenagers that have similar issues, so if you rely on the windscreen wiper, that's when your lid can fold over and you get those telltale white stripes. Viennese Waltz gently moves the eyelid around in both directions without causing further damage. Right, I always start at the outside edge here so that I put, because if you do suddenly deposit too much pigment. It's much easier to sort it out when you know this isn't in the way. So start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow and I'm just gonna plop some of this on. Really just buff it out so we get a nice gentle blend. Now the whole point of these pick challenges that I started. Um, it was partly to <clears throat> to use palettes that I'd already got rather than buying new palettes all the time because obviously I can't afford that. I'm not on PR lists. I don't get all the latest stuff sent to me. I wish. Um, you know, what I see what I, you know, what you see on my channel, either I've bought or it's been bought for me or gifted to me by a friend or a family member. So, 
you know, it's... And I wanted to find a way of just utilising the palettes I already had without people going, oh, that's boring, I've already seen that palette loads of times, you know? And this for me is the way to do it because in a lot of cases, I mean, people know that I've stopped using Jeffrey on my channel. Um, but I've depotted all of his eyeshadows, and very often when I'm doing something like this, I'll be using a Jeffrey eyeshadow for something. I just won't tell you it's a Jeffrey eyeshadow for obvious reasons. Um, but it's just, it's a, you know, it's a way of using what you've got in an imaginative way and also because I was always intrigued whenever you saw the big beauty gurus getting their PR palettes and stuff the majority of them did very similar looks with it you could guarantee if there was oranges and yellows and browns in there they'd go straight for those and go straight for a warm tone look and there were times that I think uh, those are not the colours that I'd be drawn to and initially I'd think oh I must be looking at the palette wrong and then I thought well no there is no wrong way to look at the palette I mean the colours are in there for you to use so can you see why I love Blush Tribe? It just blends out effortlessly. Uh, I have got a couple of her new palettes from um, the new company that she started up, which is Miali Beauty. Um, they're good, but they're not as good as, they're not as quickly blendable, shall we say. You can get the same result, just takes a little bit longer. Lush. And now I'm going to go in, I'm going to clean the brush on a clean washcloth, and then I'm going to use the same fluffy brush and go into Manny, which is the dark green, and really blow that through the crease. But yeah, I was I was always intrigued that people would see a palette and be drawn to different colours in it but I, I used to get very frustrated that they were always like oh there's no there's no mid-tone brown that I can use for my transition colour well why do you need a mid-tone brown you're doing a green look or a blue look you use a green or a blue and it used to frustrate me that they would then pick up another palette or a single or their bronzer and start off with a time wrap. So I thought right I want to start a challenge up. I didn't know if anybody would want to join me on it and I thought well if they don't I'll just do it you know by myself kind of thing. But the whole point was that I wanted to get some of my friends on YouTube involved and just see how if because the whole point of, of pick is that we have a photo or a painting or a picture or whatever and we can only use the colors that are in that picture you don't have to use all the colors but you can't add colors in that are not there so for example you know I can't put a yellow in or a, a blue in because there is no yellow and there is no blue so it's literally shades of green and lavender with a little bit of black in the um, patterning on the praying mantis's back so you know and I just I thought, I wonder how, because obviously the majority of people that I've been drawn to on here that I've done collabs with, like me, love colour and don't 
necessarily need a mat to do a colour, to do a look. You know, they'll, they'll do an all shimmer look or, you know, they'll do a look that doesn't have a brown in it. So I, I began to wonder whether our looks would be similar or whether we would choose something different based on not 15 shades from a palette, 30 shades from a palette, but based on a restricted number of shades in a picture. And so far, every single one of these, all 50 of them, we've come up with different looks. Uh, there's been a couple that were similar um, because one of the pictures that I chose was a photo that I'd taken of um, Ypres Town Square in the snow at night at Christmas. So it was kind of shades of sepia, <laughs> one of the few times I used brown. Um, So obviously we were very restricted to the number of colours we had there, but even then the looks that we produced were different. So, and it just, it fascinates me that from one picture, two people can be inspired by two very different elements on that picture, you know? Um, you know, I'll say I'll be drawn to one, not necessarily this one, because obviously, as I said, we're restricted more on number of colours, but, you know, if I, uh, Halloween ones, for example, and it's like some of us are drawn to the greens, and some of us are drawn to the purples, and some are drawn to the pinks, but uh, pinks, oranges, you know, so I just find it fascinating how different the looks can be using exactly the same source material and obviously we're not necessarily going to be using the same palettes either which also adds an element of uniqueness to the looks that we create because I don't know if Anne's going to I don't even know if Anne has this palette let alone if she's going to be using it And again, it's, it's encouraging you to use palettes and look at what you've already got in your collection and use palettes that you already have rather than feeling that you have to go out and buy everything that's new. Because I'll admit, I'm a, I'm a makeup collector as much as a makeup enthusiast. Um, and I've got way more palettes than anyone would ever be able to get through in a lifetime. Does that mean I'm never going to buy any more? No, not at all. <laughs> I've got my eye on a couple of palettes, to be quite honest, that I've seen that have come out. Including the, uh, the new Kaleidos one. With Angelica Lirma. Not Lirma. Angelica... Oh, i It'll come to me. Nyquist. Angelica Nyquist. It's because I normally collab with Angelica Lirma. Um, but I've seen the new one that she's got coming out with Kaleidos and I'm like, ooh, that looks pretty. And I have got, apart from the, the Deep Sea Luster, which was their first ever palette, which I missed out on, I've got all of their slim palettes and I've got their escape pod palettes so I like their formula just cleaning the brush off and I'm just going to with nothing on the brush just buff along where those two colours meet to really soften the edge really blend the two together. That's nice, I like that. 
So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is better for you. Right. As always, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. However, once I put the pigment on the brush, I will be wetting it with this fixing spray. You can use any liquid to wet the pigment. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Podescu, priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray. You can even just save an empty bottle and put fresh water in it each time that you're doing your makeup. Just so long as you don't put a wet brush in a pressed pigment. Right, now there are three shimals in the colour realm that I'm looking at. I think that one's a little bit too pink. So I think we're going to be looking at those two. And I really like the brightness of that one. So I'm going to go into Monique and I'm just going to use a flat shader brush. Now I usually wet shimmers regardless of what brand they are, partly because it helps minimise fallout and also because you know how people always say, oh they're best applied with your fingers, I don't like doing that. Um, I don't feel that I have any control over where it goes, you know. Um, this is now wet, this ferrule, so I'm going to stick it in my knuckles and spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles because then we're going to have a very expensive stick. Right. Yeah, so I um, but usually by wetting a shimmer you get a similar effect as if you had applied it with your finger. But I use it mainly to prevent fallout, to be honest, or to minimise fallout. You can't always prevent it. is such a pretty colour. I'm just going to dry the brush off and I'm going to dip into grain which is the slightly deeper of the two lavender-esque colours that I was looking at. Again, wet this one, dry the ferrule I'm just going to add a little bit of this just at the very end to blend it into that deeper green on the outer edge of the mobile lid and then just lightly drag the lighter shade across the top of it. See that effect that gives you? Much better, as Bag of Chips would say. Second series of RuPaul's Drag Race UK is on! Loving it, loving it, loving it. They've got a Welsh Queen on there this time, so I'm very happy. And oh my god, the Geek Queen. She's amazing. She just, she can, oh. She looks like a different person, every outfit that she puts on, she's absolutely bloody amazing. Right, now, with my left eye, I do have to do things slightly differently, unfortunately. Um, I've got super deep creasing just here, as you can see. This was from where my eye was pulled around when I was a kid, as in five, six years old at the ophthalmic. 
Now I do have to stretch that lid out, which is something I tell you never to do because of the damage it causes. But if I don't, what happens is the pigment settles loosely in those creases and then through the day flakes into my eye and down my face, which not only is painful, looks unsightly. So what I do to cause as little additional damage as possible, I only stretch the lid out as far as I need to to straighten those creases and then I apply the colour as quickly as I can, blending it in really well and then gently let it go back again. Try the brush, pick up a bit more pigment because obviously you do use a wee bit more pigment when you have to do that. And then I'll just finish the rest of the lid off in exactly the same way I did this one. You can see this lid moves an awful lot more than my lid did this side. Dry the brush. Going to grain. I just love this palette. This is just it's me in a nutshell. It's all my favourite shades in one. Sometimes I wish there were a couple more blues, but to be honest, I tend to wear purple and green more anyway. So and add the I am really sorry if you just heard my stomach grumble. It really shouldn't do that. It had a toasted bagel at five o'clock this morning. And it's only 11 o'clock now, so it's nowhere near time to eat again. And again, just lightly drag lighter shade across so we get that really pretty gradient hmm. I like that right my lovely ones I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some base products on some you know foundation and whatnot and I will be back to finish off my eye look with you now I am going to have to wait a fair while now before I can talk to you again. But for you, my poppets, wow, for you, it's going to be absolutely blooming instant. So I'll see you right now. Shut up, stomach. Hello, my lovelies. I am back, as you can see, once again. Soap brows for the win. Although this one behaved perfectly. This one, not quite sure what it wants to do, to be honest. But it's up ish. And it is shaded with Manny, which is the deep green that I used here. Right. Going in with a flat topped brush. I'm going to go into Mohan which is a beautiful, vibrant purple. And I'm going to use that along the lower lash line. I was very tempted to put some liquid liner on. But my eyes have been a little bit weepy the last couple of days. And I really don't want to risk mucking up the whole look by making them have a bit of a I don't want to do this moment. Okie dokie. Nice chunky brush. Elf calls this the C brush. I just call it a chunky blender myself. 
and I'm going to go into iris and I'm going to use that to just softly buff out that lower lash line and it's still raining folks I mean, honestly, anyway, I think it was January. <coughs> Lesh. And then I'm going to grab my MAC highlight that I picked up in Let It Glow, which is obviously the holiday one. This is just a really cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay probably well over a decade ago now. Just pop a little bit of this under the tail of the brow. And in a corner and you know I like to bring mine down and just blend it underneath the tear duct and just sort of softly blend it into the colour that I've got going on underneath my eye you can of course just do the inner corner I just think it finishes my eye shape off nicely to just blend it down Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you for one final time and uh, I shall do some more highlight all over my face because we know what I'm like for looking like the dim man. Um, mascara, lippy, do something with the hair and I'll be back with my finished look and to tell you a little bit more about Anne. So, see you right now. Hey my lovelies, I don't know what my hair is doing today. I really do not know what it is doing. I do know that my eye is starting to uh, have a moment to itself already. Marvellous. So, this is my finished look of Little Miss Frilly Pants there. What do you think? You like? You not like? Uh, the highlight obviously is the MAC one. Mascara is my Clarins one that my friend Hedda sent me. Lippy is Fenty Unbutton. I'm not sure if I like this, one, this shade on me. I might need to use a lip liner with it to define my lips a bit more. See how I feel. See how it how it grows on me through the day. So, if you're one of my four F babies, after you've checked to make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube are unsubscribing people, but leaving my films in their recommended, so it's not obvious. And once you've checked that your notifications still say all. Not that they're actually sending emails right now. Um, and you've left me a comment on what you think, which colours would you drawn to, what look would you have done. I'm going to need you to go over to the lovely Anne. Now, I've known Anne for a long time now. Um, we get on fantastically. She... I still refuse to believe the woman's in her 60s, absolutely refuse to believe it, because one, she doesn't look it, and two, she sure as hell don't act like it. Um, she's grandma, she's an author, because I've had the opportunity to do a bit of a sneak peek of the book that she's writing, and I've already thrown my hat in the ring to uh, record the, uh, the audiobook version. 
because it's really that that's got my name all over it. Um, she is really fantastic. She loves playing with colour. She randomly shaves her head, and she's uh, she's kind of the Vivian Westwood of grannies, I would say. She's just so lovely and so out there and you know she usually finishes um, her films off by saying be good because I haven't got any bail money you know and it's just oh I really really do get on well with her I've you know I've often said I'd love to sort of do a cruise across to America and then hire a car and just drive around and meet you know visit all the places I want to visit and um, sorry someone come down next door's path you know, visit all the places I want to visit and meet up with some of the people that I've been collabing with and you can bet your bottom dollar that Anne's name is going to be damn high on that list because girl me and her in a local pub or a local bar, I suppose it would be in America, wouldn't it? Or a tavern. I don't know. What do you call them, man? Are they bowls or are they taverns or ale? How, what do they call them in your area? Um, we, they'd have to put a warning out. Because a pair of us together is probably going to be quite dangerous. And I think we'd end up shocking a few people but yes um, if you're not already aware of her I'm going to need you to go over and check out her channel and check out the look that she has done um, and basically do all those good YouTubery things give her a like, give her a comment, give her a share uh, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to her you will not regret it, I promise you um, I just think she's lovely, basically. Um, so it'd be awesome if you would show her the same love that you show me in my comments section. Because let's face it, the 4F family is the nicest group of lovelies on the internet. Uh, if however you are here from... Anne's channel, or you've tripped over me in some other way. Hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it here. Um, this is pretty much what you're going to get from one of my films. Uh, me blethering on in what I'm told is a, a very comforting and reassuring and calming manner or voice. Uh, Later on about everything and nothing at once, uh, usually whilst applying coloured pigments to various areas on my face. Uh, if that sounds like the kind of thing that piques your interest, it'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. It's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button and you turn it grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube are going to start sending them again soon. In the meantime, as well as the rather large back side that I am sitting upon, I also have a very large back catalogue of films you can watch. I mean, there's the preceding 49 episodes of this series, for example. And I've got other collabs, I've got challenges, tag films, product reviews, tutorials. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So hopefully there's going to be something on my channel somewhere that will interest you. So, you know, if you need a little bit of me time, then as I've said now for what feels like forever, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy, and just chillax, baby. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all the remains me to say. 
is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.